Craig Bolu, the man. Oh my goodness, the living legend. You won't even believe this. I ain't even playing. Oh! I ain't even playing. Oh! I ain't even yeah! playing. I ain't even yeah! playing. <laughs> Yo, as soon as those came out, I'm like, I'm grabbing four. And I, yeah. I, I didn't even. And I grabbed. <laughs> Two of each of the same color. I was like, "Yo, yeah, you did." And then, you, and, as, and as soon as you got them, you uh, you sent me a photo of all you guys wearing them. Oh my gosh, yo! So those of you who don't know, Craig and I go way, way, way back. Uh, I don't know how we actually met. Maybe he remembers more than I do. But all I know is that this guy is an absolutely awesome dude, snowboarder, uh, family man now, big truck uh, man. Got he's got he's got a ring on his finger, ladies. You can pack it up and go home, okay? Pack it up and go yeah. home. Uh, all five foot one of him is uh, is taken. And <laughs> close, close enough, yeah. <laughs> close enough. Okay, so just tell us a bit about who you are, where you from, and uh, like, like, let's go from A to Z, because I think, when did we connect? Did we connect at, at Blue Mountain or before that? I think it was Blue Mountain. I believe it was Blue Mountain and we were chatting. And then, um, yeah, because you were living... Because you were living in Ottawa at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, was yeah. It Ottawa. I lived in Ottawa, but I was living. I I don't know if we like because at some point I was living at Blue Mountain, so I don't know if we met then or like uh, maybe because I might have been. Because I, I think you might have been competing. Yeah, triple challenge. Yes, so that's for sure where we met. Okay, yeah, okay. Oh man, because I remember you were sending it super hard, and I remember <laughs> the judges were like beyond hyped on you. Yeah, but you I were just, just like, here comes Naylor, and you're just like, wow, like sending. Oh man, but I just, you know what? The thing is, I wish I had the like the way the flow I have now. Back then, I was just sending it. I had like was not seeing it, and now I can <laughs> like, I went like I hadn't snowboarded in two years, and I was like seeing it. I'm like, okay, just chill. You know what you can do, and then like I had the literally the best park session of my life. I could not not land. I was like, what is going on? Where is this? Like, I, in a contest, barely do a back 180, and I'm, I'm dead. Like, I'm, I'm all on the yeah. road, right? You throw a back roadie, and you're like, before doubles were in, like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go double. I'm going to die. Oh, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but I, everything is good with you. You're good. It's been a while. I haven't chatted with you in a long time. I know. It's like I randomly text you here or there. Like, you know what? I think – don't – like, hold on. Don't hold me to this. I'm going to show you something. I think I got choice. <laughs> oh, my phone here. Okay. Uh, let's open it up. Yeah, that's a contacts. I, this is how hardcore he is as a snowboarder because I only have, like, I have hardcore skaters in my, in my, my phone contacts. Is it still there? <laughs> Let me see if it updated pr properly. Favorites. It did. It, uh, oh, there it is. Check. Under. This is favorites. I don't even know why, but – Check. Hold on. Where are you? Is that it? I can Craig. see it. It's right there. <laughs> Craig, Craig, I, dude, I'm a favorite. That's yes. nice. Thank you. Craig, Craig's a favorite, everybody. You don't know. Like, this guy has, like, the sendiest skills of all time. And I know that that's probably going to – that plays into his, his business, into his family life and all of that. Um, but, like, when I met Craig, like, Craig, you were, like – you had the dirtiest spins I have ever seen. Oh my gosh. And you know who spins I, I rated the highest at that time? It was you and a guy named Sandy. You remember a guy named Sandy? Sandy. Yeah, what was his name? And his sister's name was. Oh, I bet you people are going to watch this after and going to be like, as if you didn't know it. Um, Is like an Olympian or something? She, was she an Olympian? I have no idea. I'm just maybe throwing she, things out maybe, there. Maybe she was. <laughs> maybe she was. Oh. I, feel, like, I feel it's on the tip of my tongue. Like, I know it. You, you probably do you you probably do um but yeah okay so the, like uh, i just remember man this guy was just so good. you're so good man like frag i was always so jealous this guy could just throw it down and put it down like it was you there was andrew burns yeah burns is still out there though isn't he dude burns is still doing it man like still in the backcountry still crushing it just same burns like it's insane man like and he's I, I personally, I, I, my body just couldn't do it anymore. Okay. And like, Burnsy is still crushing it. Like, there's still so many dudes that are just giving her. Mm -hmm. And I'm just blown away. Like, after everything that we've done and everything that they've done, mm -hmm. you want some water? <laughs> you ever? Go ahead, dog. Yeah, come back, Naylor. 
No, it's all, no worries, man. That's what we have posts for. Coming back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I mean, for a like, couple of things, I think for Burns, like, one, like, he stuck to his guns. He was doing videos before, like, it was cool to do. Like, I know. Like, he was, like, he was punk-ass Canucks. And that was, like, that one was, like, it was, like, Mission 6. He had Union. He had... Um, who else was he riding for? I think Capita was one of his sponsors at the time. He was, I remember like, dude, when I grew up in Timmins, I remember watching a punk ass Canucks movie. And I remember watching Andrew Burns being like, I have no idea who this guy is, but I want to be him. Mm. And came out to Whistler. Well, no, because I guess I would have, we would have rode together. You were, you were probably in the same contest, did the triple challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. hundred percent, man. And, and I think that's where we met, and I was just, like, blown away. I was like, this guy is going to school me and school everybody in this contest because he's so good. So oh, good, man. <laughs> and then, like, and then I met him in Whistler, and I was just like, dude, I'm like, remember Triple Challenge? Mm. And he actually – I'm never going to forget this because he's like, yep. He's like, that was the same contest that Naylor was in because he remembers you. Yo, Bernsey, like, took me under his wing, like, right from yeah. the jump, and I was like – I don't even know why. Like, he was so good. And I'm like, how come this guy's talking to me? Like, because you know, like, that vibe at, at Blue Mountain. Like, if you're, like, a local there, it was, like, it was tough to get in, right? Oh, yeah. So Burnsy comes in, and, like, everyone knows who Burnsy is. And then he would, like, say hi to me. And we'd be chatting. And he was, like – and then everyone was, like, just talk to me different after that. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that, that comes with the territory. But, I mean, Burnsy was doing videos. And I was, like, yo. I, like, he, he also had that front – like that front nose board slide, like front nose, front board style. Like yeah, early, yeah. like early in the yeah. game, man. Yeah. Oh, man. And he, uh, I, I remember that triple challenge, that one big air jump. Do you remember that one? It was so big. Yeah. I don't know how yeah, they put was, such a big amount. Like how did they put that on that size of a mountain? Like I don't understand it. Because yeah, people were starting at the moon dropping in. They were like, let's go dropping. Everyone was like, dropping. He's dropping. And everyone was like, what did you say? Dropping, yeah. Okay, he's dropping. Go, go, go. Dude, man. crazy. Oh, man, those guys were so – and that was like – they like that was before the safe era of jumps. Like, yeah, exactly. It was like <laughs> step down, landing. You're like, this is safe. Nope. <laughs> a lot of, oh, man, so many people got broke off on that. Oh, yeah. oh, my gosh. Parents will let their kids go in there. They go half speed and just like – Oh, my. Go oh, off that and go so 10 feet bad. to flat. I'm like, this is – it's not good for anybody. Like, not good. All oh, the worst would be when, like, grandpa would come into the park with his kids, <laughs> with these kids, and they were like, <laughs> freaking, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I'm like someone's going to die. Someone is going to die today. Good oh, night. But you know what, though? You know what, Naylor? Those are the days we're going to remember, though. Oh, dude. 100%. 100%. I, but I think this guy's name was Terry. Okay, for, at Blue Mountain, there's a guy named Terry. Do you remember a guy, like, I don't know. He looked like like a, a unmuscular version of Scott Steiner. Okay, <laughs> I think he was like the park manager. I'm not sure. I don't like, remember him. No. And he was just always so angry, like always angry. <laughs> He's like, "Damn these jumps!" I'm like, "Have you ever ridden a snowboard before?" Like, I just he didn't look that athletic to me, you know. So I was like, <laughs> "I think you need to look athletic to be a good snowboarder," but he just didn't, did not fit the mark. But no, uh, no, I, I don't remember him. I wish I did, but I don't. Oh, man, there was so many good snowboarders that got underrated at that place. Like, there was a guy named I think I want to say his name was Kenny or something like that. He was like a half pipe guy. And he would just he would Kenny. boost it out of that really terrible co- uh, half pipe that they had, and then there was uh, Kenny. Yeah, like Kenny. He was like the. F- I want to say his name is Kenny. I really want to <laughs> say that, and he was like the first guy to like, like you looked, and he was clearly a cut above of everybody. He would boost out of that out of that half pipe, and it wasn't a good half pipe. You know, they had the pickle pipe, and they had the little. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell us your worst break off. When was your worst break off? <laughs> Like break off with a with a girlfriend or break no no off like <laughs> no 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 listen you're married. Do you want to know both? Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> no, like your, your worst ever like slam. Okay, give me a slam, that, and it doesn't have to be like you know I died and then I was resuscitated, but the one you, you're like I don't want to ever go back and revisit that slam again. I I, I post dude I posted it yesterday on my story. On my Instagram, I Is posted that- on my story because Burns was like. There's like a, I don't know if you see Instagram now, people are like, 
posting like, hey, post your worst slams. And people are like posting like their worst slams and, and, nom- and nominating other people. Okay. <laughs> so Burns was like, hey, Bull, he was like, what's your worst slam? And he knew what my worst slam was because it's like, it's probably the worst. It's probably the worst slam. Not the worst slam, but like the funniest worst oh. slam. <laughs> so do you know what I'm talking about? I even know the snowsuit that you were wearing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my okay. so you, the double backflip. <laughs> you you know exactly what I'm talking about. In the movie Thirteen O'clock, the yeah. double backflip at like I think it's like one minute and fifty eight seconds in my part, and it ends really badly. Oh my that, gosh. It's like the opposite of the world's worst. Oh my gosh, man! I, it's was... like the, it's like the world's worst scorpion. It oh is, my. yeah, but I'm... reverse scorpion. And like... <laughs> I, 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 I honestly didn't know I was that flexible until I watched it. And the producer, when we were editing my part, was like, he played it in fast motion. He's like, oh, that's so bad. And I was like, all right, I'm like, Let, let's play it in slow motion. Let's watch it in slow motion. And I've honestly never laughed so hard in my life because we just replayed the one part where my head goes through my legs <laughs> over and over again that was 100 percent the worst fail of my life okay because listen. that was like it, it couldn't have went worse but oh. it was it was so funny that it was awesome Oh, for sure. Like yeah. I watched that and I could not stop because it's like, it's happening and you're like, okay, it's going to, at some point, like your back's going to stop. Like, you know, you're just going to like spring back the other way, but it just keeps going. <laughs> See, like if you have the editing power to do that, you should, when I start talking about it, oh, play 100%, that clip. A hundred percent. I'm going to a hundred percent because they're going to want to know why I'm laughing so hard. Yeah. So, at the end of it, when I do the one and a half, it's just when my legs go through and my little head goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. I love it. It's so bad, it's good. Love it. Oh, no, I I, I never laughed. So I, I like, I, I'm sure there's been like worse painful falls, but. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, that one was pretty bad, actually. I did actually, like, I, I paralyzed myself probably for, like, 10 seconds, and I actually thought that I was oh, really? yeah. going to be, like, I thought that was it, dude. Like, it was so bad. Like, my spine must have been just, like, a slinky. Like, it was just, like, bro. Oh, oh bro. Yeah, that, means, bad. that means, like, if you had that feeling, that means, something, like, I don't want to even know what happened to your back when, like, it was, like, probably, like, this, it was probably, like, out, and, like, it just fell back properly. Oh my gosh, bro! Yeah, not good. Uh, no, because I, uh, yo, know, was it um, like okay? I had a pretty bad slam at uh, where was it? Um, Trombla. Um, yeah. Okay, so I just got a for some reason I decided to ride a one sixty three. Like I don't know why. Okay, and for those of you that don't know how tall I am, I'm five nine. A one sixty three is just obnoxious. You don't need that. Okay, like you're going on powder. Okay, but. Not for this jump. So I'm like, yo, I'm like going to fly off this thing. You know, I don't know if you've ever been in the park. Like the first beginning park at Trombone, they usually have like a, a triple jump, like one, two, three. Yeah, and yeah. The first jump was like a step down. Like just like you kind of just go into it. Then they had like a really kicky second jump. And then they had like a kind of mid-sized. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I was going to film that day and I thought I was going pro that day. Like that's that was my mentality, you know. Yeah. And so I go off the first jump and I'm like, I felt good. Like, you know, when you hit a good step down and you just hit that spot, I don't know what it is. You just feel good. So a I'm perfect like, tranny. Oh, oh man. Tranny. Like, I'm like, yo, and I felt good. And you know, it's, <laughs> the worst part about it is that the chairlift is like flying right by it. So you think, man, you think, you think everybody's watching you. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm sitting, but you know, a 163, you're just going to go faster. And I did not check <laughs> that jump. Let me tell you, but, and it was like, I mean, I, I went up and I was like, I'll just do like a backflip. You know, just whatever. So I lay it out. And, like, I laid it out because I knew I was going a little hot, but I didn't think that hot. So I lay it out. And, like, I'm coming around. And I'm, like, I'm looking for the blue. Like, I'm looking for the, the spray paint. The blue lines, frig, yeah. Frig, but could not find it. Could not find it. 
So I'm like, what the, like I'm like, where am I? Like, <laughs> I, like oh, I have, no. you know, it's like slow, like you're in your head. You're like, okay, this is going, it's going really slow, but really fast. I'm like, where the hell am I? But I'm like looking down, like all I see is white. And I'm like, like, I swear I had a chance to look back and I could see oh. that the landing was back there and I was nowhere near it. Like I was nowhere near it, but I went down and I just tried to like get the board to like at least make contact before I made ground, hit contact, right? Frank. I hit my coccyx so hard, man. Like I chipped a bone in my butt, like hundred percent. I couldn't sit in school for the next the rest of the year. Like I couldn't snowboard, couldn't do anything. I had, and I was on the wrong side of the mountain. So I had to go back up in the chairlift, go back onto the other side of the mountain. Oh, right. Cause the park was on the other side. Yeah. Oh man. Oh no. I was rattled. And so like, I'm sitting on my side, like, just like, Oh, Oh, please. And whatever's all unholy. Like I, I didn't know. Okay. So then I get to that side. It makes it worse. It's like I had a, a night. My, my first car was a 1968 Cutlass, bright baby, royal blue. And I didn't have money to get pack. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, you do those dumb things. No, yeah. You're just like, let's just go. Let's go. Yeah. Right. So, and then I'm like, how do I get across? I, I took the ferry. How am I going to get back? And I didn't have gas money. So we like drove up to this gas station. Um, I'll admit I did a pump and run for the first time in my life in the most <gasps> obnoxious car. What? Oh man. John! I know. Eh? John! Oh, I know. I did a pump and run. Um, and with like the car was like, it's a 68 in the middle of winter. Does this thing ever stick out? Right. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's fast forward a little bit. So back to triple challenge. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm back at, no, no, but I'm back there. Okay. And some guy walks up to me and say, Hey, you know, I'm the only black snowboarder like anyone, like Ben Hinckley and Sean Naylor. Those are the two. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I think there's a guy named, was it Nick Taylor? Is that, there's another one, Nick Taylor? There's three of us. Okay, so there's three of us. Okay. Real guy, right? Was he a real, he was a real dude, no? I remember Nick saying, Taylor? Is it Nick? Um, I, if I had an Nick assistant, Taylor. I'd go check him out. There was another black snowboard. He did, I, he actually did a real street part, like a real, for X Games, I'm pretty sure. I, I, he was the only other black guy I ever saw snowboard. Ben Hanks. Okay. Anyways, um, this guy walks up to me and he's like, hey. Were you ever at like Mount like Mount Tremblant? You know, because English accent. Tremblant, uh, yeah, of course. Tremblant. I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, did did you ever like do a backflip like off a jump at some point? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, dude, I thought you were dead, man. I saw. I was sitting in the chair. Oh. I thought you were dead. Like, I I don't even know how you got up from that. I was like, you know, it's a bad fall because this was like a good two years later. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Bro. Oh. But none of it was on film, and no one got to see me see my legs through my head off a, a double back. Yes. At least yours was a double. I, sh- I should have sent it for a double. At least I would have maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So walk me through your first ever big jump, Ken. Like, your, like your, you know, your first legit jump. I'm honestly, dude, I'm going to say the first legit jump was the triple challenge. No, oh, really? lie. seriously. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you look like so comfortable, man. No, I think it was just like, cause everybody else was sending it. Okay. I felt like I had to, and I had that, like, I just had that mentality. Like, well, if you want to move to Whistler and you want to be pro, you better, you know, hit jumps like everybody else and quit being a little baby, you know? So I was like, all right, well, let's go. And then I just like, Every trick that I did, I just had to realize I had to slow it down instead of spinning so fast because I'd get out of control. So, like, right. you know, a, a 720, you know, back in Timmins where I was snowboarding on the, the smaller jumps, yeah. and you're like, okay, well, if you want to do a 720 like you would do back home, you got to slow it down. Oh, yeah, so that was, like, that was kind of step one was, mm-hmm. like, learning how to spin and do tricks on a bigger jump as opposed to, like, smaller kickier jumps where this thing was just, like, Mm, to the moon you went man that thing was so intimidating man just yeah. looking at that and thing. i remember it was so wide it was just like it was huge I remember, I remember looking down dude and i remember it was like it was honestly almost the width of the run and it was just like okay well we're not going around this thing we have to hit it so let's go like it was yeah. like intense yeah oh man that was like i you know what's yeah. funny is i was like i actually got better at jumping when i went i moved out west Got in the black yeah. park, did that whole dream or whatever. Yeah. And it wasn't until I had a, a, a board break that I was, <laughs> then I figured it out all of a sudden. Like I was a good jumper. I still am a good jumper, I think. Yeah. Like I think I could go out and probably throw it down. I'm probably going to do a nine, but I'm not going any more than that anymore. Um, but I remember, so you know like the wedge, uh, sorry, the, the hut jump? Yep. 
Shack so that, jump, yeah. The shack jump, sorry. Uh, shack jump. Don't shoot me, everybody, who's part of snowboard folklore. Like I no, did but not. Hut, hut, hut jump works. Hut, ju- a shack. I, you, I guess you could say both. Uh, I was I, I got- shouldn't even. I shouldn't even correct you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no. So and that's a pretty intimidating drop into that jump, eh? Like, oh, yeah. Because I think a lot of people under, like, you underestimate the, how high you're going to go off of that jump. Oh, right. And you don't travel very far, but you just boost, like, so high, man. I remember I, I did my first back one and I'm like, I was just stuck in shifty. I'm just like, nice. I'm, yeah, I'm like, okay, I, we have to wait. You know, like you usually kind of like poke it out and then like, yeah. whatever, uh, yeah. no, none of that. And then, so I did back one and then that's the next jump is like, it's a 40, 50, 60, 70 or whatever. Yeah. Right. So I get mm. to the 40 and it's still a pretty decent jump, but it doesn't look like you're going down like super hill, but you know, they got it all park all set up nicely. Like they figure that out. So I come in. And I was riding for Zion at the time. So I had this, uh, oh, what board is it? It was like one of his, I honestly think it was the second run of boards. Um, and the edge broke out, my heel edge broke out as I was coming up to spin cab. Oh. So I come out and it just breaks as I hit the lip. And then I just went under. It's my first time doing an under flip because like it just, it rotated. And then I did cab oh, seven. Just, right, yeah, yeah. Oh man, never been so scared. But like, I rolled out, I was like, oh, I can, I can hand this. I couldn't believe I actually rolled out of this jump, bud. Like, I, I, I don't know how I did that. Like, so then I started – because then I was like, oh, now I have this opportunity because I was a guy who could spin off my toes and spin off my heels. That's right. Yeah, that's and right. So I was like, I like to throw it front seven, <laughs> like off the toe. And mm-hmm. then if I'm going further than seven, I would go – I'd be more consistent to go off the heel. Heels, yeah. But, man – that place was a lot of fun, except, you know, tell me the springtime in there, if you're not in the park, is like, what is that? That's yeah. death. That's death in mobile form. 100%. 100%. You, like, Did you hear the, the mountains closed, man? That's from the, the corona, or that's because they're... Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So the mountain completely shut down, dude. Whistler Black Home totally shut down. So but, everybody is like, so many people in Whistler are like, well, what are we going to do, you know? like well, it's, it's real cheap to live out there, too, no? No, it's so expensive, dude. It's so expensive. Do you actually live in Whistler? No, I live in Pemberton. Okay. That's yeah. Like- so it's like it's like 20 minutes past Whistler. What's up? Oh, here you go. Casey, Daddy wants or Casey wants Paw Patrol. You want Paw Patrol? Come on, Casey. Go. Oh, Casey. Who's that? Hi, Casey. Casey. Yeah? Oh, you just heard about your Paw Patrol? Nice one. Yeah. Casey. Job, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dad, dad life's pretty cool, man. It's uh, something else. Well, that was <laughs> a, that's wild, a, dude. That's a pretty big transition from you, though. You were like, we're so working hard, like going crazy. And then uh, I kind of jumped out of the scene, and then there you are. Like, so, like, walk me through your. What's wrong? Casey, what? Oh, Casey wants snacks? <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah, they, yeah. Let's go for snack walk. What kind of snacks do you want? You want you want cheese? No? Yo, dad life is the deal. You want some blueberries? Okay. Oh, you're lucky. We have the biggest bag in the world. Aren't Yo. you lucky? Yay! Yo. You just became, again, the most important man in her life. Yeah, it's pretty. You know what, though? It's, it's crazy, dude. For anybody who is, like, a mom or a dad out there, it's, like, well, more, more so a dad. Um, I find that, like, the first, the first, like, year is very, like, mom dependent. Yeah. But then once they realize, like, you know, dad's not that much of a, you know, he, he's kind of a nice guy and he's super cool. Then, like... She actually wants to spend time with dad, which is super cool because we do fun things. We, you know, we go snowboarding, right? We go snowboarding. We play golf. Yeah. yeah. Fun things. Here, here's your blueberries. Okay, go sit down, nugget head. Go. Yeah, it's super cool, man. I love it. I, uh, I, I, I honestly didn't know what to think at first. I was just like, I don't know. I was just, uh, I was kind of scared because I didn't want to. I didn't want to go into that, you know, adulthood like that. I, I found that was like, you know, the super next step to like growing up. 
Okay. Yeah. I didn't want it. I, I wanted to be a Toys R Us kid, you know, I didn't want to grow up. Yeah. So like, <laughs> but it's funny because like, as soon as you have a kid, you go back to being a kid. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you like, because you want to do things that, you know, obviously number one, make them happy. But like number two, it's like, dude, it, it like takes you back to when you were a kid. Mm. It's crazy, dude. I love it. It's no, bad. I, I think that's like, that is the best way to put it. Cause a lot of people are like, Oh, you're going to be a dad and it's going to suck. Cause you're not gonna be able to do that. I'm like, yeah. But at the end of the day, listen, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going on 37. Okay. Yeah. And I got buddies of mine that aren't anywhere near where I'm at in my life. I'm like, so what do you have? Like I saw one of my buddies posted, like I have the job I want. I got the money I want. I got extra, all this and everything. And I got no kids. I got, and all I want is more stuff to fill the void. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how much cooler is it? Like now when you go to like, obviously you still want to buy stuff for yourself from time to time. I mean, you get it. Yeah. Like when you're like, yo, my kid is going to flip when they see this. I know. Like they're going to flip. Like we bought a boat. I had a small boat, like for fishing, whatever. It was, you know, oh, fishing. no way. Sweet. Yeah. It was like a 50 horsepower. It was all right. It did the job for me. I'd be fun to fish off the rest of my life. My kids got into fishing, but like into it. So then I was like, well, they're going to want a wakeboard and they're asking, could we, <laughs> we, like I'm trying to keep my kids away from literally everything that I do, but not really at the same time. Yeah. And so they love to skateboard. They love to bike. They, and they're like, my kids are good. like, Oh my gosh, they're, they're going to be good. Like, I don't want them to be good. Cause then they might have, <laughs> they might have those dreams of like, go in the distance which is fine if they make it or whatever yeah. and, I, and i got nothing against it but uh so we had to buy a bigger boat so they could like wake off it so i bought it like it's still a fishing boat but it'll produce a bit more of a wake <laughs> for a five-year-old so and it, well a six-year-old a four-year-old so i'm like and then like they come in here in my office and, like i got fishing rods everywhere and they're like that's my rod my kid came in yesterday and he's like he's like yo this dad and this like rod is weight like it's he's like that's mine i'm like okay <laughs> sold <laughs> they go out like especially during this time like we practice casting for a good month before our fishing season opens so we're still in the back literally doing all that stuff but yep. what? that's awesome dude yeah yeah so, so, like why did you stop like see, i know you told me your body broke down it was there anything other kind of thing that led to you like leaving the snowboard scene like did you like lose love for it like, you know because i know it can get pretty you know i i i i did dude honestly i'm not gonna lie you, oh there you are um I, I honestly did, and that was that was another reason. It was like it was just like, like it was just uh, having you know having your sponsors, and you know, some sponsors can treat you a little bit better than other sponsors, and you know you're 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 trying to like devote all your love to like you know the people who are caring for you in <laughs> in like sponsorship world, and like some companies were just like just taking me for a ride kind of yep. thing, and I was just like you know what like. I can only do that for so long, you know, mm -hmm. like trying to, you know, trying to make the next step and trying to make, you know, that next tier, but it's like, it, it didn't quite happen. And it was just like putting so much love towards something that I wasn't really getting any love back. I mean, mm -hmm. like I love, I, I love snowboarding, but it was like when it was becoming me just trying to do too much and not appreciating snowboarding right. as a sport. Yeah, it, re it, it really ruined it for me. And now it's nice because now, you know, I got the family, got the business. I'm not, I'm not sponsored anymore. And I can just go out and just ride for myself. Yeah. And it's I like, don't, I don't have to meet up with Johnny at 12 o'clock to go film hut jump. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it's nice not to have that and not the, you know, just like, ride on your own terms and, and and i bought a season's pass dude and i bought all my gear this year and it was so nice to do that mm. because i i don't have any obligations which is yeah. huge dude yes. i love it i love it oh that's that is like i don't i think you just nailed on the head that is one of the most liberating things it's like you work so hard to get in and then the system doesn't teach you well and you know like if you were to go back in again like you would go in with a total different perspective like if you were hundred percent you're like, wait a minute. I'm like, no, listen, I'm the one putting my body on the line. I'm the one risking my neck, yeah. throwing myself down these things. And like, what happened to Brandon? Like, that could happen to anybody. Yeah. Like, you know, and like any anybody, anywhere, anytime. I and know. you're telling me that you're going to give me a snowboard and then I got to go sell this snowboard to go make money? Are you crazy? I know. Like, I know. You and you know what? It, it, it's happened so much, dude. Not just snowboards, but just like other things. And it's yeah. just like, dude, like, really? Like, come on, man. Like, it's just, you know, I, I like, to a point where like 
I have to sell this in order to, you know, pay for a part or I need to sell this in order to get to a contest to try and like represent you guys on the podium. And I would go and do it and win the contest. And then they'd be like, okay, well, on to the next one. Here's another snowboard. Try and sell another one. And you're like, whoa, dude, like, you know, bad. And, you know, it, you know, I think that you, you would have been like, I feel like you're one of those guys that was just on the wrong side of tech, like not of of technology, but of social media. I feel like you would have been one of the baddest dudes ever. Like on Insta, your Insta would have been X. Like if you came in that time, like as you're making that, tri- like when we were coming to triple challenge. Yeah. Like, right. Just like imagine, because you know, now you don't have to be the the best trickster. You don't have to be the best everything. You just have to be a part of the culture. And if you've got influence within the culture and everyone's jumping on you quick now, and you mm. can, you can validate yourself outside of what they value as. That's mm. the thing. So like, even with me, like, like I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a preacher man. Right. So yeah. I go around preaching and people will, you know, they'll try to like not pay you. Like I had that happen. Yeah. People like try to not pay you. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like we agreed. I actually, you know what? I'm going to be real with you right now. I got invited out to a TV show. Okay. And uh, so I'm like, I got invited, but they invited me late. So they wanted me to fulfill a role for them, which was fine. Yeah. Cause I can do that. We're chatting. You see, like I can do TV. No problem. Okay. Yeah. It's not that hard. You'd be awesome. At it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not to say that that you're like a local like you'd be good at it okay um yeah and uh they so i i had to buy a late ticket so you know the price goes like up like instantly when you're buying a late ticket uh and then i had to get a hotel and i had to get a car because no one could pick me up or anything like that and then i do the show i do two back-to-back tapings for them and then i do a private interview with them like you know um whatever yeah. and that they could post on their stuff so they get everything they wanted for what they need to do to accomplish their thing to make their you know ends meet so I'm like, I come back. I'm like, so, uh, you know, where's my, where's my expense check and my, uh, you know, my money, like for what I just did. I, mean, I don't like, I have a base number and then I have like, here's my base. If you get this, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. But I'm usually expecting this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, uh, we didn't discuss that. And it was like the one time I did not put the contract up front. Like the one time like I, I do that all the time. Right. Just to kind of clear the water and you know, I was like, did you, did I literally pay to come to your show? Like, I don't want to, I'm like, and you took me away and I'm a family man at this point. I'm like, you took me away from my family. I'd have a conversation with my wife. It took one, like we have an agreement that I can go 24 days, 24 outings in a year with my wife. Like, so I I can go out and it's okay. Like, I don't have to worry about it. I can just book it Yeah, back to back, whatever. Right. I was so pissed but i'm like and i oh my i'd be so furious dude i'm like that just cost me a thousand dollars like what like like what are you thinking and they're like i'm you know what the answer was i'm sorry like we'll be sorry somewhere else oh bud now that, that was it dude that was it no yeah and I was no. like, yeah yeah so like i mean uh, obviously not the same as having to go sell a snowboard to eat uh, i mean i wasn't starving afterwards but man <laughs> Yo, okay, I gotta tell you, I'll tell you this. I don't like I don't know if you've heard my life story, but Whistler was not a good time for me, but was not. I used to have to steal food to eat, man, when I was there. But I was living on Wilkie's couch. Uh, Josh Wilkie. I do miss that guy. Yeah. I was living I think on- he's living in Revelstoke, dude. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I yeah. saw him in Revelstoke, dude. Craziest story. So I was sure. there uh, I don't know, four years ago. Okay. And I'm sitting there in a pizza shop. After the bar, okay, we had party. I'm sitting there <laughs> right against the window eating a piece of pizza, and I see this dude walk by. Don't realize who it is. And then I see, I see the same person walk back, and he just looks me in the window, and we just stare at each other. I was like, Wilkie? And he's like, bull you? I was like, oh, this just got weird. <laughs> and he came inside, and we hugged. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, dude, I live here. I was like, what? Oh, no one, like, you, don't, you don't realize that. You're just like, what do you mean you live here, dude? Like, why are we here together? It's so weird. Yeah, yeah it was oh. crazy. It was a trip. Oh, man. I'm telling you. Those, like, meeting, Wilkie was like, so I met Wilkie in Ontario, like in Ottawa, because he used to skate the yeah. same park that I, in Orleans, yeah. man. And, uh, man, he was just a cool <laughs> dude. Just, just a chill. I, I feel like he was like a hippie. Or something. Like, the new, he was like the modern hippie, not a hipster. Yeah. He was like a modern hippie, man. He was just yeah. cool. He just ride with it, man. Oh, man. Yeah. I was like, he's a good dude, man. 
No, okay. So now you're, fa- you're, you're fa- like, how'd you meet your wife? Dude, that crazy story. Tell another, me, man. Dude, another crazy story. So my cousin from Timmins, he's 42, 43, I think, somewhere around there. Yeah. So, but he was always an inspiration to me because he was – you know, that really good snowboarder, that really good skateboarder, just that cool dude, you know, good looking guy. Everybody wanted to be around him. And um, he came out to Whistler. So I was living here at the time. So this was 2011. Okay. So he came, he came out. I think that was almost 10 years ago now. Holy smokes, dude. That's crazy, man. So he came out for a visit and he was like, hey, Craig, he's like, there's a couple people from Timmins that live in Whistler. Mm-hmm. We're all going to meet up. We're going to go to Earl's for dinner. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, dude, this is totally. He's like, okay. He's like, we'll meet you there at 8 o'clock. Meet up at 8 o'clock at Earl's, and I see this girl. I'm like, hey, I'm like, Al, who's that? And he's like, oh, that's Michelle. She went to the French high school. Ooh. I was like, crazy. So, anyways, I introduced myself to her, and I was just like, oh, like, you know, you know, so-and-so. And she's like, yeah, you know, we were just chatting about different people we knew. And, I mean, <laughs> Okay, she, no, 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 back it up. You can't say it like that. You – went in you like a cold salesman like you went in with ice in your veins you just walked up to hey so you know so and so yo what's up baby <laughs> yeah. no no obviously i played it more cool i was just like you know that but it, it eventually went into like oh so you went to terry oh do you know you know my cousin pierre he went to terry and she's like oh yeah i'm like oh do you know so and so anyways we we're just chatting back and forth because she knew people at my high school okay and i knew people at her high school but she's uh, she's three and a half years older than me. Oh, you like them late so, older. So anyways, yes, I do. I love them older. So okay. anyways, so, uh, nine years later, dude, we're still together. Crazy story. So she's from Timmins. We met in Whistler. Trip. What? I know. Mind blown, dude. So nuts. Crazy. Yo, that, that is crazy. <laughs> you met her like, what? Dude. So matter so my cousin is the one responsible for me and my wife getting together. Come on. Come on. I it, you it's like this. I, I always tell everybody when they're looking for a mate, I'm like, <laughs> stop looking. It's gonna show up so random. It's gonna be, dude. you can't even you're not even be able to orchestrate the way you think this is gonna happen. Like yeah. I that's not how I thought I was gonna meet my wife neither. I'm like, that's not how I'm gonna meet her. I'm gonna meet her like this, that's how it's gonna mm. happen. I'm gonna look her yeah. and find her like this. Mm. Nope. I walked in. Boom. Just like that. And I, I, I was trying to be a drummer for for her or whatever. And I didn't even, like, I didn't even think. I was just throwing haymakers at her. And she was, I had this rule, okay? So back then, I was like, I was a bit of a, a ladies' man back then. Yeah. And I had, like, I had a formula. And the formula could tell me. Oh, where did you go? Oh, it's all good. I can still oh, hear you. Anyway. So there the you formula go. would tell me, like, all the things I needed to know, all the details I needed to know. The things I need to know is, do you have a boyfriend? And how long is this going to take before we land the airplane. Yeah. And uh, that's the, that's, that was my mentality back then. And then I said, in my head, I said, if anyone is ever like immune to this, like this system that I have going on, that's, mm-hmm. that's the one, that's the one. Totally. And she would like, like, I don't know. She's like the, the Hulk and Mr. Incredible, like mixed together. Nothing like I just, thum, thum, thum. she's like, who is this guy? I'm like, and I, I look like a little kid. That's like, when you know, like, the bully is putting the hand on the kid's head and they're just throwing haymakers and nothing's happening. Yeah. That was me. And uh, she gave me a second try at this, like becoming a drummer thing. <laughs> and it just yeah. worked out, I guess. Uh, so I'm pretty stoked out. And then and uh, you guys have been together for how long? 10 years now. Yeah. Eh? Good job. Yeah. Well, we would have, we would have been, I think we married seven years, eight years now, seven or eight years. We were married in 2012. So we're coming up on our eight year this summer. And then eight, uh, what? That's it? Eight years? Yeah, married eight, married eight years. Oh, we, married eight. Yeah, we've been married eight, and then we were dating, but she like we had a rough start, mostly because of only because of me. So <laughs> I was still working the residue off of my old life before uh, before kind of really figuring this out because I was still pretty yeah. broken as a person. So I was like, I thought women were just were like, how do I say it? I thought women were going were just as malicious as men. And that could be true, but there's someone that's not, obviously, and uh, yeah. some aren't. Just so, uh, it's like, and she wasn't. She's like, and she's stubborn as a mule, bro. 
So our relationship works because I'm as stubborn as a mule too. So I ain't going nowhere. She's going nowhere. Like we got our, we got our feet in the ground, bro. Like, yo, that's how we do this. And uh, so, okay. When did you start your business? Like why, why did you start? Like, I mean, obviously you left snowboarding, whatever, like yeah. just before we get there, was snowboarding yeah. like viable as a, as a career option? Like, or well, is it like, is it a fun time that won't, you can't really build on? I want to, like, that's one of the questions I've always wondered. I mean, as, um, I think as a Canadian athlete in terms of, uh, of professional snowboarding, I think like just from what I've, I'm seeing and just being in the game for so long, if you're not top, if you're not top five, six in Canada, you're not making money, you know? So okay. it's like, you have to be like that. Right. So, and you say top five and there's already two guys that taken top two, right? Or three is Seb. You got like McMorris. Yeah. Funny story Max. about McMorris. And, oh, and Matt, yeah, and Peru. And he's just up the hill from me. He's just like up the street from me. Not street. Oh, no way. He's the Bromont Mountains like close by, right? So that's his mountain. Yeah, yeah, right. And, um, and they do that park nice <laughs> for him, let me tell you. Um, but, okay, so uh, Mark was uh, his, who was on Facebook. And this is just before like he got like his name. Okay, so I, I had uh, I added him on Facebook or whatever, and I was just talking smack to him. Like, I would talk smack to any snowboarder. Yeah. But it was mostly, like, jokes. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we know, like, the same people. And yeah. he was like, man, can you please stop? <laughs> I was like, yo, bro, I'm just chilling. Uh, and I, I, like, oh, yeah. I must have really hurt him. I caught him on a feeling. And I'm like, because he's from Saskatchewan, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. My, my relatives are from Saskatchewan. Be that. Um, but you're saying that if you're not top five, and, like, that's three. Right there, that's the top. That's three. Yeah. Like two more spots left. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, like, there's, like, like uh, you know, the, all the contest dudes, like, you know, like, like not up, not not even up and coming. Dude, the kid's crushing me. Like, Darcy Sharp crushing oh, me. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, like, yeah, he's out of this world. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, there's no way I could even step onto the scene with any respectability anymore. Oh, not even yeah. close. Like, I, I'm like, nope. I used to be, like, I, like, I could see it happening. I'm like, I'm still close. I'm still, oh, back to back nine or back to back 10. Okay. Yeah. And then it's and now like, it's like, now it's like back to back triples and you're like flipping out of rails. And it's like, dude, like, can we just maybe just, just settle down a little bit, please? Yeah, but they have to, and the thing is like, because of technology, because of the availability of information and yeah. then, like, you know, guys can jump into foam pits, which we didn't have. We had ice cheese wedges all day. Like, like. Dude. When you were telling that story earlier about Trombla and flipping, dude, I was cringing and I had some hair on the back of my neck that just like left my body because I just, I remember eating so much poo poo <laughs> on those jumps and just, and just wishing that this day wouldn't happen because I remember like, just like landing on your butt, dude, like on, you know, a 50 foot jump at Trombla is like, it's like somebody just throwing you out of an airplane at like a thousand feet, dude. Oh. You're just like, this is going to hurt just so you know. Bye. Oh, like, man. They had a tabletop jump at the bottom of the park. Okay? No, like before the chairlift. And it was like this massive flat before. I'm like, where are you supposed to take this from? Uh, and I'm like, I said, like, okay, I think I have enough. Solid knuckle. Solid good two feet on the front of you're that. You're done. Like, you're not going to do it, man. I'm like, okay. Like, no. Like, I, I'm like... Good thing I used to work out, like I still work out, but like I worked out then, like there's no way I would have taken that impact, man. It was just rough. Okay, so move me from snowboarder to business owner. I and mean, that, that's a jump and a half, bud. And you're doing yeah, it's it, a, well. it, it It's a bit of a jump. I mean, I've, um, the summer times I, I was always, you know, active with any job that I had. I was, you know, since, even since before I moved out to BC, I was always working at golf courses, you know, doing maintenance and, you know, you know, pretty much just crushing it or whatever I did. Um, but then moving out here, just like I started landscaping. Um, I started for this company in 2000, 2010. I started working for Supernatural Landscapes and I worked for, um, I worked for him for 10 years, dude. And I, I just thought that it was, no, nine years, I guess. And I just thought that, you know, I was just like, it's time, dude. Like you work for somebody for that long. Like, why shouldn't you be able to do it on your own? You know, like yeah. there, there's no reason, like, you know, respect to him. He's taught me a lot and like, you know, he's a great guy, but I just think like, instead of, you know, 
helping him out so much if I can do the same thing on my end and start my own business why not so like so I did it last year and last year was a great first year I had I only had one employee but you know like you gotta start small so I did and you're mobile when you're small you're mobile man that's the yeah. difference between that. Like I know I've learned people think being small is like, no, no, like you get to do things that other people can't oh, do. Yeah. Big companies get slow real quick. I know. Like, and that was the one thing. And so like, so like a lot of people are just like, you know, the, the word, the word got out pretty quick. And I mean, the size of my truck definitely helped the word get out that I was a new landscape company. Cause everyone was like, that guy's really small with a really big truck. Um, who is that guy? <laughs> mm, for sure. hundred percent. Like good, good marketing move. Like, Hey, we have the biggest, smallest landscape <laughs> side of the country. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I hit the table. Oh, I lost you for a second. Oh, but no, okay. And honestly, dude, Naylor, I'm telling you right now, dude, like no word of a lie. So like I had buddies in other companies. And when I started, they were just like, people are wondering, who you are they don't even know who you are they're you're like a you're like a batman like because no, they know <laughs> everyone sees my truck they see the logos they don't know who's in it but then like if you were to put me in a you know uh the logo from my old company they'd be like oh there it's craig but like they're like who's this new guy coming in the scene and it's like it's just me i just have a new company like mm-hmm. hey guys how's it going you know it's super funny. It's, <laughs> hey, it's pretty okay. so there, was, there was a lot of talk it was pretty cool so how did you go into like, I mean, you obviously worked for 10 years. So I don't know if you were like just being a laborer, were you already starting to work on the numbers and stuff like that? Like, were you able to negotiate? Yeah. Like toward, towards the end, it was more like, you know, like going out and like, you know, bidding on certain jobs and like, you know, going down to buy a certain product and kind of like getting more into that kind of like, you know, more like owner slash like management kind of skills, Yeah. which was super cool. Cause it, it, it got me into owning being a business owner a lot easier it kind of like you know got me into it a lot more fluent instead of just like okay you own a company like figure it out Mm -hmm. but so i I mean like like i said like i I definitely owe everything to my old boss like he you know he he would give me the shirt off his back like he was just that dude that like anything that i needed he would make sure that i had which was super cool Mm -hmm. and um and when i told him that i was starting up my own company like you know, I obviously understand it was, uh, it was a bit of a awkward conversation. Cause it was like, you know, he gave me nine years of employment. I gave him nine years of employment. Like, you know, it yeah, was kind of like, exactly. It, 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 well, we're still friends, you know, like it was, it was, it was that weird, like, like, I don't want to tell you this, but I have to tell you this. So it was like that weird, like, Oh, like, weird gut feeling like dude i'm about to tell you something that you're not gonna like Mm -hmm. but then i told him and it was like a huge stress off my back and it was like you know it's time to build your business so that that moment it was like now that i told him and he was like no he's like i totally understand dude he's like you gave me nine years of good service you know you worked your butt off but like go do it dude yeah and that's i think that's the thing like you i mean you can only go so far as like in any kind of company like in that particular business right you you're you're a laborer or you're the manager, pretty much the owner. It's like really, you don't have like 90 different layers to the top, you know, right? right? Yeah. Um, like my friend, like the guy I used to work for, he's an arborist. Like I used to work for him and he, like when we worked for him, he was still on the job working with us. Now mm-hmm. he's got like, yeah. now he has two crews and all he, all he, he opened a website like literally this year, go figure. And yeah. uh, cause that's what you do now. You open a website up 10 years late to the game, but you know, you do it. Yeah. And he doesn't even see a chainsaw anymore. He's just doing estimates. Yeah. Like that's oh, yeah, all he's yeah. doing. I'm like, well, you've earned, you've earned the, the right to just do estimates first off. Cause you've been back breaking for how long yeah. you're also providing employment, food, all that stuff to 10 other guys and they all have trucks and it's, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you took the leap. That's, I mean, that's not a lot. No, of people I know it was, a, it, it was definitely, it was tough to do. And especially like, having a family now. Right. And I mean, you know, we, we, we just bought, we just bought this place, you know, a year and a half ago. So like, what's that? Casey wants apples. Oh, you don't say, okay, let me get you some apples. (laughs) It it, it was one of those things dude. where like the wife was like, listen, like, you know, I'm on board if you're on board, but you got to work hard dude. Cause like you got a family now and this is like, This is, this is a no joke situation, dude. It's like, you gotta, you gotta bust it. 
and especially yeah. the first year too, right? Like you're dropping tons of cash. You're like, you know, you're buying tools, you're buying trucks, you're, you're paying, you know, you're paying staff. You're, you know, yeah. so it's like, that was the thing. And it was like, I just told the wife, I was like, listen, I'm like, I'm ready to work hard. Like it's mm. not, I've, I've always been a hard worker. I've never, I've, you know, I've never slacked on the job. Like I always think if, if, if you're going to go to work, you know, what's up? My name is daddy, not mommy. What's your name? That's right. It is Casey. Um, but yeah, it's just like, so, I mean, we, we, we made it work. I mean, I, um, I told myself I was just going to do maintenance landscaping for the first year. And, and then, what's, what's, what's maintenance landscaping? Well, maintenance landscaping is just like, you know, cutting grass, picking weeds, like okay. that kind of thing. Okay. And, um, and then, cause, cause well, I, I worked six years for, um, I worked six years from, for my buddy's company, Brad. Yeah. Um, so I did six years landscaping maintenance and then I did three years landscape construction. So that was like, you know, installs, you know, you're planting trees, you're making, you're building rock walls, that kind of stuff. So like, okay. so the last three years of his business that I was working for was all construction. So starting up this new company, I was like, there's a lower overhead if I go maintenance because it's just you buying lawnmowers and trimmers and blowers and you're just picking weeds and cutting grass, right? Yeah. But getting getting your name out there is super important. So I was like, well, that's number one. I'll just, you know, do that, get my logo flying around town, people wondering, you know, who Mountaintop Landscapes is. And then year, I was thinking year three or four, get into construction landscaping, but this the last year went so good and i just thought you know what let's let, let's just do it but we'll start small like i said like we'll go you know two maintenance people on the crew and then we'll go to construction crew and we'll just you know we'll get enough jobs to get us through the year and that's the thing it's like every year just build it up a little bit build it up a little bit and just grow gradually not mm -hmm. like don't try to go to the moon right off the bat so mm -hmm. that, that that's kind of the way that i'm gonna do it you ever but yeah, yeah buddy give yeah, her buddy. that's it man oh man dude that is a trip like you dude talking to you is a trip it's been so <laughs> long my dude yeah man technology is a is a beast these days and uh i'm super happy to connect up with you uh yeah, everybody dude. um you can go follow him on instagram craig bow you don't whatever you do your thing you find it. it's a guy with no gloves snowboarder as you will see if you've watched it you've already seen his uh his video you can watch it again. We're going to end the video with the, this whole podcast with that video again for you guys who are watching that. Go on. <laughs>